Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Andy here and today I'm going to talk a little bit about visiting Panama City Beach, Florida. Panama City Beach is a very popular resort town in the Florida Panhandle that sits on a stretch of sand nicknamed the Emerald Coast for its blue-green water and its slogan is the world's most beautiful beaches. And we recently spent a week up here so I thought I'd give some of my own thoughts and share 10 things to know before you visit Panama City Beach. Firstly, the beaches up here, they really do live up to the hype. These beaches up here, they do get hyped up a lot as some of the most beautiful in Florida. And if you're going here for these beautiful beaches, you are making a great call. The beaches and the water up here are absolutely beautiful with some of the finest white sand and the bluest water that I've personally seen in Florida outside of the Keys. In some spots, it almost looks like it could be the Caribbean. And I say that as a Tampa guy with a bit of a west coast of Florida bias. We have some really nice soft white sand beaches here on the west coast of Florida from Clearwater down through Sarasota to Fort Myers. But my first time visiting these Emerald Coast beaches really kind of blew me away with how nice they are. How soft and white the sand is and how blue the water is. The sand is like fine white powder and it's weirdly kind of lacking seashells. We didn't see a lot of seashells on the beach where we are, but that could have just been the location that we were at. But it did make for really nice walking on the beach, just this fine white soft powder that was cool to the touch, even in the hot sun. Love the sand here, love these beaches. This right here is a totally unfiltered view of the water from the balcony in the place that we rented for a week, and it is stunningly blue. In my opinion, now having finally been here, I would probably even say that this stretch of sand here on the Emerald Coast from Panama City to Pensacola, they really may be the nicest beaches in Florida. So you will not be disappointed if you're coming up here for the beaches. These beaches are beautiful, but they are very built up. The beaches up here really are beautiful, but there really isn't actually much of it that's really easy and convenient to reach unless you're staying right on the beach. Panama City Beach is really built up with high rises, hotels and condos, which line the beach for miles. And there's only a few spots like St. Andrew State Park Beach and the stretches of beaches around the two fishing piers that offer easy parking and easy access for people not staying in a place right on the beach. This is an issue all over Florida though, and it's really not something unique to this area. Lots of Florida beaches are really built up now and they make it kind of hard for the rest of us who just want to go have a day at the beach unless you're staying there. But this is something you really should know in case you're considering staying here, but in a location that's not directly on the beach. But there are a lot of little beach access points that run along the main road. And if you are staying on the other side of the street from the beach, you can usually find one of these little beach access points, but it can be a bit of a pain to drag all your beach stuff across the street and through the sand until you finally reach the spot where you want to plop it all down. But you might want to consider a place right on the sand if that's possible and within your budget just for the convenience. And it's nice. It's nice to get up in the morning and look out and see the water right there instead of the hotels and condos across the street from where you actually want to be. Panama City Beach does offer a lot of bang for your buck and it is relatively affordable. So the bright side to all this development here along the beach is that you can actually get a lot of bang for your buck here when it comes to finding accommodations because there is so much to choose from. There are so many different condos and hotels and apartments you can rent and Airbnbs. So you will definitely not be lacking of places to stay and with all these choices, pricing can get a little bit competitive. If you open up one of your favorite travel apps and compare the prices here to prices in places like, say, Destin and Clearwater Beach that are kind of similar in some ways, the prices in Panama City Beach will usually be fairly less expensive when you compare them against those other Gulf Coast beach towns. So there's lots of choices here for lots of different budgets, and many of them are right on the beach. When we were planning our trip here, 
We were kind of between Panama City Beach and Destin, but we decided on Panama City Beach only because the average price for renting a condo for the week was quite a bit cheaper, and it was a lot easier to find a place right on the beach in our price range because there's so many places to stay right on the beach. Now this may be totally irrelevant during spring break time, which is the busiest time in Panama City Beach, but the rest of the time, yeah, this place is actually reasonably affordable compared to other comparable places in Florida. The beaches here are beautiful, but they can actually be quite dangerous. The water along the Gulf Coast beaches are typically a lot more mellow and calm than their East Coast counterparts that have a lot more waves. There's usually not much surf or wave action along the Gulf Coast compared to the East Coast of Florida, but this year, Panama City Beach has had a really big problem with dangerous riptides, and several drownings this year have actually made Panama City Beach statistically the most dangerous beach in the country. I believe seven people drowned right here in just the month of June alone. It was a big deal. But I'm not saying that to scare you. You shouldn't be scared to go in the water under normal and safe surf conditions, but you do want to pay extra attention to the flag conditions here. And if you see double red flags, that means the water isn't safe for swimming at all. They won't let you go in the water at all, not even knee deep. And I understand they can even issue fines if you're in the water on double red flag days too, so don't mess around with that. If you see the double red flags, maybe take that as a sign to use the pool or just lay on the beach and not go in the water, or go around town and check out some of the tourist attractions that are here. The beaches here can get crowded and loud, especially on weekends and holidays. You might already know this, but Panama City Beach has earned quite a reputation as a bit of a rowdy party destination, especially during spring break. So if you're looking for a relaxing beach getaway from March to about mid-April, you might want to reconsider and think of another spot. But during the summer, I found this to be only kind of half true. It definitely had some of the party element around, but the vibe was mostly still family friendly and really nothing I would feel uncomfortable taking my kids to. It was really just like any other busy beachy tourist town in Florida without anything too crazy happening. The property we stayed in was called Shores of Panama and it had this interesting mix of families and couples around for the most part. Kids were playing in the pool, families at the beach. And then at night, there would be a fair amount of like howling people and people screaming from the balcony. So there was still like this little background element of spring break hanging around. But really, I thought it was actually kind of funny and it didn't really bother me. But I'm glad the windows in the condo we rented were thick enough so we didn't really have to listen to it unless we were out on the balcony. It wasn't like all night or anything like that. But every now and then you'd hear someone kind of go yeehaw out of the balcony and then other people would join in. And it was like a thing that would happen every now and then. One night, someone lit off fireworks on the beach outside of our hotel, which, you know, it was one night. It was a few days after 4th of July. Maybe they were shooting off some leftovers, and that's not a thing that normally happens. But this is Panama City Beach. They have that reputation, so you might want to uh, go in with the expectation. You're going to see a little bit of rowdy partying happening here and there. But really, if you're worried that Panama City Beach is just going to be like party all the time and drunken shenanigans and spring break all year round, and it's not the kind of place you would take your kids to. Nah, I really wouldn't worry about that. I never felt uncomfortable taking my kids here, at least not during the months when it isn't spring break. And there are a lot of family and kid friendly activities all over town. And I don't think they would start putting things like Ripley's Believe It or Not and go-karts and mini golf in a place that they didn't think was gonna be family friendly. And speaking of those family friendly activities, there are lots of other things to do here other than just lay around on the beach. Panama City Beach does have a lot of tourist attractions and stuff to see and do, so if you ever get one of those dreaded red flag beach days, there's still lots of stuff to keep you and your kids entertained. Now, granted, there's not a lot of cultural or historical attractions here, if that's your thing, and a lot of the stuff to do is gonna be maybe the kind of thing that will fall into that tourist trap category. It's one of those towns with lots of mini golf, go-karts, one of those big slingshot ride things. There's a Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum, a Wonderworks Museum, a water park, a Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. 
and one of those big observation Ferris wheels too. It's it's that kind of town. Some of these attractions can get a little pricey, so that's something to consider if you're coming down here with family. Your kids might see all that mini golf and go-karts and start begging to go, and the prices for that can add up quick. We even found a mini golf place that was like 20 bucks a person, and that kind of thing can really add up if you're taking the whole family out for some putt-putt. But one place that I do think is worth checking out, especially if you have a thing for old school kitschy attractions, is Goofy Golf. This place has been here since the 1950s and it's actually the first fully themed out mini golf course in the world. So maybe there is some culture and history to see here after all. And it's relatively affordable too and it's really something to see, it's pretty interesting. I did a full video review on Goofy Golf and I'll leave a link to that in the description and at the end of the video too. And while we're talking about tourist traps in Panama City Beach, let's talk a little bit about Pier Park. Pier Park is kind of like this centrally located entertainment and shopping district with bars and restaurants and that big Ferris wheel. It comes up a lot when you search for things to do in Panama City Beach and we went to check it out, but it is basically not much more than an outdoor mall and shopping center with like a road running through the middle of it. It's pretty touristy and it has all those places like Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville and Dick's Last Resort. You know those kind of places that are pretty much only found in touristy towns. And honestly, I didn't personally love Pier Park. Again, your mileage may vary, this is my opinion. You might have a different opinion and that's great if you love this kind of thing, but it really depends on your own personal preference. We went on a weekend night and the main street that goes through it was packed with cars and traffic and a lot of them were all tricked out, pounding loud bass and just kind of hanging out. It was kind of like a car meet with lots of people in there just trying to see and be seen. And that's all fine, but it didn't really feel like this is the place for that, especially when you've got a lot of out of town tourists around. And it made it kind of hard to cross the street to get to the shops and stuff on the other side. And it just seemed to kind of be hurting the overall atmosphere. The whole car meetup vibe that was happening here at Pier Park, it may not be a common occurrence, but I didn't see anything that told us anything about this being a special event. It was just a bunch of cars right through there all tricked out, playing their loud oonts, oonts, oonts music, and it kind of ruined the experience a little bit when you're just trying to walk around this area and we didn't really want to hang out here too long. I kind of think that this would be a much better experience if they would just close off this street for traffic during maybe weekend nights and open it as a pedestrian only road at night. So the whole area can just be kind of like a big street party atmosphere with the bars and the restaurants and let people walk and mingle around. That would be fun. If they would do something like that, I think Pier Park would immediately improve. But that's just my own take on the experience. You may love this kind of thing and you may go out there and think it's great. Panama City Beach is far cleaner and far nicer than you might expect. So for years, Panama City Beach was always kind of lumped in and mentioned in the same breath as Daytona Beach. And this being my first time here, I was honestly a little bit concerned that the town and overall atmosphere was gonna be similar to Daytona Beach. So I'm not sure if this is an unpopular opinion or a particularly hot take, but I think Daytona has kind of seen better days. And the last time we were out there, a lot of it was looking pretty run down and shabby. Quite a few closed hotels, closed down businesses that were boarded up. And the place just didn't have any kind of fun buzz that it once did. I really wish that wasn't the case and I have fond memories of Daytona Beach from back in the day and I'm really rooting for them to turn it around up there. But arriving in Panama City Beach and driving around, it really seems to be staying current and clean and well kept. Lots of new and modern properties along the beach, lots of small businesses thriving, restaurants and gift shops open. But it does still maintain a bit of a nostalgic feel to it too. You'll see plenty of old Florida kind of stuff here and there mixed in with the new which I really like to see. And driving along the main beachfront road here, I got a real nostalgic kind of feeling to when I used to visit Florida as a kid before I moved down here 20 years ago. So it's a nice mix of old and new, and I really like to see that. And they did get grazed by Hurricane Michael a few years ago, so if you're wondering if the town is still showing signs of that, now the Panama City Beach area, the resort area, is completely cleaned up and it does not show any signs of hurricane damage. The traffic can be relatively bad. This is something a lot of us may not even consider because Panama City Beach is a fairly small town, but for such a small town, I found the traffic to be actually pretty bad at some times. 
especially in the evening hours heading toward Pier Park and along the main beachfront. It felt like around dinner time, all the streets were suddenly really busy with people going to dinner. So definitely be aware of that and give yourself plenty of time to get anywhere, especially around those times. We were trying to go to this one place for lunch one day, but the traffic was so bad on the road that runs along the beach and it was not moving at all that we just decided to park and go to Senior Frogs for lunch, which was fine. And the burrito and margarita I had were actually really decent, but Senior Frogs is one of those Margaritaville, Bubba Gump, Dick's Last Resort type places that you only really see in tourist towns. And we were looking for someplace local, but we just had to kind of surrender to the traffic and eat there because the traffic wasn't moving at all. Now we were there in mid-July, so maybe that's a particularly busy time. Maybe other times it's less busy. Maybe around spring break it's more busy, but just putting this on the list to be aware that traffic can be relatively heavy in some areas, some of the more tourist dense areas. So give yourself plenty of time and maybe plan your route to avoid traffic. Make sure to visit St. Andrews State Park. Now earlier in the video I mentioned how this area has a bit of a party reputation and the beaches can be a little bit crowded and loud and maybe you came out here and you want to find a place to escape. Well, St. Andrews State Park is just up the road and this is the place where you can go to escape the crowds, escape the noise. There's lots of parking. It's a great place for seashelling too if you're a seashell hunter. So definitely consider St. Andrews State Park as a place to come visit if you kind of want to escape from it all and get a little bit of a quiet beach experience. So that's 10 things to know about visiting Panama City Beach based on our recent trip out there, our own personal experiences and takeaways. If there's something I forgot or something you'd like to add to this list, please add it in the comments and uh, like, share, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Want to learn about more fun things to do in Florida from the theme parks to the state parks. And please tell one other person about this channel in this video. It really helps the channel grow. This is Andy. I will talk to you guys next time.